Many people, when they first consider utilitarian ethical theory, say, yes, a way to justify doing what I want to do, maximizing that pleasure. That's right. That's what it's all about. What's going to make me happiest? But that's not what the theory is about. It's about maximizing net pleasure overall. In many cases, utilitarianism will require us to actually sacrifice and diminish, diminish our own personal pleasure. For example, if uh, I've got 20 bucks and I'm thinking about how to spend that 20 bucks, and I think, boy, I'd like to go see the new Star Wars movie. And I can't afford to take my entire family, but I can certainly sneak away and watch it myself for 20 bucks. Maybe I can't get a very good popcorn and Coke combo, but I can at least get in, maybe sneak in a nice box of Raisinets, one of my favorite snacks. However, I could also use that $20 to take my family to the local park. We could stop and, and get some, some watermelon, perhaps, and some uh, chocolate milk. My kids love chocolate milk. My family enjoys watermelon. They would have a great time at the park. Maybe I wouldn't have as good of a time at the park with watermelon and chocolate milk as I would at the theater watching Star Wars. However, if I'm serious about utilitarianism and I'm attempting to maximize net pleasure, I have to take into account the pleasure of all the impacted individuals. And in fact, in this particular case, if my family were to find out that I went to the movies without telling them or to find out that I had the option to take them to the park instead, they would become resentful. I would be possibly ashamed. In fact, even if they didn't find out, I might be worried that they're going to find out. I might be ashamed nonetheless. So I have to take into account all those different things. But the point here is utilitarianism is not an excuse to do what will make you happiest. It is the moral mandate that we maximize the pleasure of everyone overall, to maximize net pleasure overall, the overall net balance of pleasure versus pain. And of course, the reason utilitarians argue that we should do this is because there's no reason to think that any individual's pleasure and pain are any more important than the next person's. And so if, if uh, we're, we're rationally consistent and we recognize the fact that, hey, I, I feel pleasure and pain, I want to promote my pleasure and diminish my pain, but so does the next guy, and in fact, so does that coyote, now I've got to start taking into account the pleasure and pain, not only of my, my fellow man and, and other humans, but also of, at the very least, adult normal mammals, because adult, no, adult normal mammals have a nervous system that's similar to our own, and so we can conclude with enough certainty that they also feel pleasure and pain in a similar way that we do. So if you're utilitarian, you have to think long and hard about the implications of your actions beyond yourself. Now, a second confusion or a second mistake that people new to utilitarianism make is that they only look at the immediate impact, but rather it, it projects not only far into the, the sentient population, sentient, just a fancy word for being able to feel pleasure and pain, but also as far into the future as you can reasonably predict. And so you might think with, uh, with some certainty that if I were to smoke a crack rock right now, it would feel really good. I've never smoked crack, but I'm, I'm told it's just awesome. I used to work with a guy that said he tried it and he said it was just great. Luckily, he didn't try it anymore, but he, he did try it once. However, utilitarianism doesn't say that, yes, we should smoke crack because it'll feel wonderful. Utilitarianism says, think about the broader implications of smoking crack. Think about how that's going to impact your relationships with your colleagues, with your family, with those who depend on you. In my case, my students, I wouldn't be as good of a professor if I were addicted to crack, or at least I don't think I would be. I think that'd be awesome. I doubt it, though. But I've got to take into account not only how it's going to impact those others, but also how it's going to impact me the next day. I suspect there's some sort of a crack hangover. Uh, then there's going to be longings for additional crack. And then will become, become the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uncontrollable desire to smoke, smoke more crack and then to become a thief and then just to ruin lots of things and mess up other people's lives. You get the point. Think about the long-term implications, not just the immediate satisfaction. Another confusion that people often have with utilitarianism is that they say, we just can't know how our actions are going to turn out. We just don't know which option is going to maximize net pleasure, and therefore we should just dismiss this. It's just unworkable. However, consider how economists also have to work with imperfect knowledge. They have to consider how various tax policies and stimulus packages may or may not impact gross domestic product, and they certainly cannot predict the future with certainty, but they can make the best decision available with the information that they have. The same will be true for physicians. Say that one of the patients comes down with an aggressive cancer, they're not exactly sure how to, how to treat it, but they, they can look at some clinical trials. The evidence is, is not 
100% in this direction, 100% in that direction, based on this particular patient's genetic profile and symptoms, etc. But they're going to make the best decision they can with the information that they have because they want to be able to treat that, that illness effectively, or at least the best they can. It's better than just sitting there uh, indecisively. Same is true for the economist, and the same is true for the utilitarian or the, the uh, philosophical ethicist or the person trying to make a good moral decision for that matter. The last mistake the students or readers make when they, they're first presented with, with arguments about utilitarianism or they come in contact with this particular chapter from Sandell's Justice, What's the Right Thing to Do, is that they conflate utilitarianism with democracy. They, uh, they go online somewhere and they hear somebody use the, the uh, oversimplified catchphrase, the greatest good for the greatest number. And they assume that that oversimplified catchphrase, which does not capture the complexity and nuance of utilitarianism, would be consistent with doing whatever the majority of people want. Well, individuals don't even know, in many cases, what's going to make them happiest. For example, I might have wanted to be an attorney, but that, that wouldn't have guaranteed that being an attorney would make me happiest. It turns out I teach philosophy. It's not necessarily the case that this is the happiest life. The same is true of groups of people. A group of people may say that this particular candidate is the candidate we want and we think this candidate is going to be the best for our town or our county or our state or our nation or this particular policy. We want a Supreme Court justice who will do this or that because we think that's going to make us the happiest. Just because a group of people think that doesn't mean it's necessarily going to make them happiest. To use the old cliche, the German people, or at least a uh, politically active uh, majority of them, or at least a, a big enough number of the politically active and aggressive enough of the Germans, thought Hitler would be a great leader. And for a time they enjoyed some success, but by war's end, Berlin was occupied, the, com the country, much of it was in ruins, and Germans overall had suffered far more pain than pleasure. And so don't conflate utilitarianism with democracy. Just because an individual wants something doesn't mean it's going to maximize their net pleasure. Similarly, just because a group of people want something even through a venerated democratic process, even though they endorse it, it doesn't mean it's going to maximize pleasure overall.